There was a lot of attention paid to um, hydroxychloroquine, which is a drug used to treat uh, certain strains of malaria. And also um, it has um, it, it has anti-inflammatory effects such that it's been used for um, uh, autoimmune diseases uh, like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there are some conflicting results from studies. There was a study done in France that was not well designed and um, even the journal that published it has now published a, a, a caveat saying that the study was not up to their standards. So we think that that's not um, uh, reliable results. And then there are a couple of studies from uh, China and one from the U.S. The one from the U.S. Uh, is most worrisome. Um, it, it showed that people treated with hydroxychloroquine did worse than, than patients who didn't get the drug in a randomized controlled trial. So I don't believe that we have any evidence of a drug that uh, will work. Uh, a big study from China using antiretroviral drugs did not show an effect. There are many, many prospects and many trials going on right now, but we don't have the results yet. Personally, I'm cautiously optimistic. I feel that um, there is a strong scientific rationale for the use of several of these agents, monoclonal antibodies, um, other antiviral drugs, um, what we call convalescent serum, which is the you 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 harvest the antibodies from recovered patients, make sure there's no virus in there, and then you um, infuse that into very sick patients uh, to um, give them passive immunity, uh, immediate uh, assistance in fighting off the virus. So all of these things show promise, and it's very plausible that uh, if we have a surge of coronavirus, say, next next winter, uh, from the Northern Hemisphere's point of view, perhaps we will have um, a stronger armamentarium of therapies. And that may help us keep society more open because I think everybody knows that we can't keep society open, closed, open, closed, open, closed indefinitely the economic devastation to the world is going to cause tremendous hardship and ill health. So we don't want to protect against coronavirus and then harm with uh, global economic devastation. Uh, people losing their jobs, losing their livelihoods, losing their small businesses. You know, there's, there's harm and there's harm. So what we need to do is have a balanced uh, risk assessment where when we bring uh, society back to normal, we have the tools to mitigate death and uh, severe illness with treatments. People talk about vaccines, but honestly, um, I think there's a lot of nonsense being talked about vaccines. Uh, it's going to take a while. Um, to say that we're going to have a vaccine by the end of the year it would be unprecedented. We've never achieved this you know, with any other vaccine. Uh, we have to make sure the vaccine is safe. We have to make sure that it's plausibly effective in uh, small human trials and in animal studies. And then we have to test it in large um, uh, human studies. Uh, we may be able to do challenge uh, experiments in animals that help us. Uh, there's even talk of doing challenge experiments in, in humans, which historically have, has been done, but is seen as perhaps unethical in the modern era because, you know, to deliberately expose somebody to the virus. Um, but if we got an answer fast and if we took a low risk individual and they knew the risk they were taking, uh, we, we, we might get an answer faster, and that might be more ethical in the long run. I think the ethicists and the vaccinologists will be debating this in the very near future. Um, but uh, 
tip, you know, the one of the fastest vaccines that uh, was ever developed was about four years turnaround time. And with a uh, highly motivated global scientific and regulatory community, uh, if we if we were lucky at every single step, maybe we could have a vaccine in 18 to 24 months. But that would mean that everything went very well. That would mean that that we had um, we had no enhancing immune immunity. We've seen um, immune enhancement where the vaccine actually caused more severe disease uh, in dengue uh, uh, vaccines and also in respiratory syncytia viral vaccines for a very serious um, uh, disease of um, infants. And so if that were to happen with coronavirus, we don't want to use that vaccine because it would, it would do harm. So we have to make sure that it's safe, that it, it results in protective immunity, not enhancing immunity. And, um, and so this takes some time. There's no, there, 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 there's no way around it. So I don't believe that we can stay shut as a society until uh, we have a vaccine. I think we'll have to open up a society as the viral frequency goes down. I hope that we'll have reliable tests and in adequate supply so that contact tracing and testing can help us uh, sort people by their serological status and their exposure status. So yes, people will still be quarantined at home, but not as many of them. Uh, yes, people will be able to go back to work, but they'll be well informed about their status. Uh, and um, and then if we have the drugs that can uh, that can assist, then then we can. Um, open up society again, I think, uh, more uh, liberally than before.